Hey everybody, Dr. Red here, and we are back with some more Magic Arena free-to-play. Today we're going to be looking at the Wrath of Mages pre-con, go over quickly how the deck is supposed to work, roughly, and then we're going to be dealing with this uh, 1.5 version with how I tweaked it with cards I currently have available. Also some cards I would like to add to it at another point in time, but currently don't have those cards, of course. But as just a very quick deck tech here, assuming I can navigate here properly whatsoever we're going to be looking over at wrath of mages as it stands so the deck is kind of split relatively an even split between creatures and non-creatures we have 16 creature spells 19 spells that are instant sorceries etc in this case we're running kind of a, a wizard package to begin with we have like three g2 lava runners it's a one two for one but if you've cast more than two instants or sorceries in your graveyard, it's going to become a 2-2 with haste. So this card's never dead. Turn 1, it's fine 1 drop. Turn 2, depending on what spells you have available to you, you can definitely get it swinging for 2 on turn 2 quite easily. Following that up with some Shiv and Fires. It's a 2 damage burn spell at instant speed. Good for early removal, bolting the elf. Blink of an eye. It's literally just a better version of Disperse. I actually think we're still running Disperse in our flyers from yesterday, so we can easily swap that out if we still have that. In this case, both are instant cost two. Blink of an eye. If you have extra mana to spend, you can kick it and spend an additional uh, blue and a colorless to draw a card on top of its bounce effect. Disperse. Same effect, but worse in every way. Mystic Ar Archaeologist. Another wizard in this case. It's a um, 2 1 for 2. Not great, but you can. Spend five to draw two, so it's card draw, albeit very expensive card draw. We have another wizard. It's kind of a mana dork. You can tap it to add the colorless portion to an instant or sorcery. Lightning strike, a bigger bolt. Wind mage, whenever you'd cast an instant or sorcery, gets plus one, plus one. Fight with fire, deals five damage to target creature, but if you spend the kicker, which is six, so you spend a total of nine mana, you can do ten damage divided equally among any number of targets. So creatures, face, the works. Now Gutter's Knight might be one of the deck's win cons. The 2-2 two, two for 3, so stat line's not fantastic, but every spell you cast while it's alive, you're just going to be pinging them in the face for 2, which is pretty good. Repeating Barrage is going to be another part of our removal suite. In this case, it's 3 damage for 3, and you can spend 5 if you've attacked with a creature to trigger its right here, which allows you to return it from the graveyard back to your hand. So it has some resurgence, but that's very expensive for the three damage effect to get back. Plus it's at sorcery speed. Enigma Drake's going to be one of our payoff cards here. It's an 0-4 for 3, but its power is equal to the spell like instants and sorceries in our graveyard. So as we're playing, the, as we're whipping out cards, etc., this big old Drake's is going to get bigger and bigger. It's not crazy to see it get into the double digits. Sift is going to be one of our card draw engines. Draw three, discard one. So later in the game when we're flooding out, draw three cards, burn the land, whatever we don't need. <sighs> Rowdy Crew's a really weird inclusion in this one. In this case, it's a 3-3 three, three Trampler for four. When it enters the battlefield, you draw three, discard two cards at random, and if they share a card type, they discard it. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I don't like this card at all. It rarely works. It's a junk mythic. I don't know why they included this in this deck. It does not seem on theme whatsoever. Ignoring that, however, we have a Salvager of Secrets. It's like a, another recursion engine. When we play it, it's a 2-2 two, two for 5, but we get a um, fetch back one of our spent instants or sorceries. River's Rebuke. If we need a big swing, they have a bunch of blockers. Bounces every one of their non-land permanents back to their hand. And we got an open board to swing into. Banefire is going to be our X in a mountain. So basically you can spend X as much mana as you want to dump into this spell to get one big ass burn. If X is five or more, can't be countered or prevented. It's pretty solid. And later in the game, they have a creature we want or is in our way. We have a lot of mana. We can steal it. And then of course we have the standard mana over here. We got 10 island, 10 mountains, or dual color lands plus the fancy sulfur falls. But that being said, let's get into it and start playing with our Wrath of Mages. Now hopefully, fingers crossed, the games go pretty well today and I can get out because I have a full weekend ahead and need these recorded. 
Start over against Puma. Hopefully we get a good match. Not boring either way. Now let's see what we're dealing with here. I don't really like this. We're kind of low to the ground. We want to get a presence established, and none of this lets us do that. So we're going to mulligan this hand. <sighs> it's a little bit better, I suppose. We're going to hit all of our colors. We're going to be able to play Enigma Drake, which at its worst is an 4 blocker. Unless we have some cards to play in the meanwhile. And Banefire, I don't want right now. I feel like that's something I want to draw... Well, not this early, so we're just going to start with our island. What are we dealing with? We have a Leonin Vanguard. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1, and if they have 3 or more creatures, they gain a life, and it gets a 1-1, one, one, plus 1, plus 1 on it till the end of turn. Drew another land. We're just going to pass turn. All of our spells we can cast are instant, so no sense doing this on our turn, when we can do it on theirs instead. Dealing with Boros of some sort. So we got the white-red. Not too concerned with getting hit for one right now. Let's see. Do I want to do anything here? Their board's not that threatening. And potentially, if we play the Drake next turn, we'll be able to get rid of the Vanguard. And this puts them behind a turn. Just going to bounce the Stalwart. This is kind of cool, 5 damage to target creature, so if they end up playing some big bomb card that I do not want to deal with, we can get rid of it. And as it sits, we're going to be able just to block the vanguard so they're not going to be swinging in. Now let's see what Puma decides to do. The Vanguard makes me believe that they're going to be going pretty wide. This is a creature that only really does well with a bunch of other creatures and cards that have some lifelike synergies, like uh, Johnny's Pride Mate. I think that's a 2-2 two, two for 2, and it gets a 1-1 one, one counter every time it, the, the controller gains life. Let's see. You have a third card? Another Vanguard. So he's going to be gaining 2 life this turn. These are both going to be 2-2. Two, two. No reason for us not to block it. all that keen on the cards we're getting so far uh one thing is it's not these aren't going to combo very well with the stalwart i believe because when they swing i don't believe that'll trigger the mentor because they're all going to be two two so we're just going to get the mystic archaeologist out at least if we just keep drawing lands of the sort we won't even be able to use its card draw because we're only sitting on a single island currently But we do have our Lightning Strike available to us right now. They're thinking here. So they're going to be gaining a bunch of counters. We're probably going to have to find a way to deal with this sooner than later. They're swinging, which leads me to believe they have a combat trick of some sort. Uh, how useful is this Archaeologist going to be for me? If nothing else, we can clear the board this turn. Potentially. Depends on what combat tricks they have at available to them. Okay, what I might do then... We're going to strike that vanguard. Unless... If they don't have a trick, we're fine. Because that'll die. These two will trade. He gets plus one because of the uh, flavor or the text on the card. So he's going to lightning strike. So we're going to lose this one because the first strike damage goes off first. So they're just going to have the stalwart, which doesn't put us in the worst of positions. But we're kind of going empty-handed against someone who still has potentially quite a bit of action in hand. Let's see. We did get a Vodali and Arcanist. Which is a decent blocker here. It's a 1-3. They won't be able to swing through as it stands. They could have more removal, of course. So they could just be swinging in. Well, they're targeting him. I don't like that. It is a shame for us to lose that uh, Enigma Drake. It's one of the deck's primary win conditions. 
Um, let's see. You know what? If he has burn, let him use it. Make him have something here. Ah, Militia Bugler. That card's pretty reliable. Especially if they're playing a, a creature heavy deck here. Especially when a bugler buglers, it's bugles itself, huh? Now, combat tricks aside, these guys are still decent blockers, but they're at the very least going to be playing another bugler this turn. Let's see. I would have a mana to play a third, technically. What do we got? A Kinjali Sunwing. So, I can definitely throw the game a bit in their favor. In this case, whenever I'm going to cast a creature, it's going to enter the battlefield tapped, which is no bueno. Now, let's see. For us to pay this with Kicker, it would be 9. We technically have access to 5, 7, 7 mana. So, I don't think it's in our interest right now to just fight with fire a single creature. I also don't know where we're going to be sitting in a couple turns when we are getting hit in the face for four every turn for the next who knows how many turns till we can deal with this. We're just going to block what we can. Just wait for them to have like a Coplin Chain Whirler or something in here. That'll do one to everything. Oh, yeah, just a Bogart Brute. I say just, this is going to be a 3-2 beater that's just punching us in the face. We we are getting closer to kicking this, though, so that's something. Let's see, what do we need? 9 or 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so if we top deck another land, we can't technically clear the board, but we can get as close to it as we're going to get. It does feel wrong not just fight with firing them in the face, though, not going to lie. Oof. It's going to be a big swing. Seems mm, unnecessary to an extent. Ah, oh, shit. This might be our death knell then. Oh, boy. Oh, I really needed to keep the Vidalian Arcanist alive for this. Uh, so let's see what our options are. I think we just cut our losses here. I don't see us coming back from this one. Yeah, I don't think there's any blocks that could have saved us. It's a real shame we just didn't. Technically, we had card draw, but very slow. Yeah, not, not too happy with the showing in that regard. Oh well, let's hope we have a little bit better of a hand in our opponents playing a little bit slower. Let's see, what do we have here? We have a whole lot of blue, and technically we have a turn two playable. Uh, G2, I don't know how much I care about dropping G2 on turn one. Yeah, this is kind of a sketchy keep, but good news, at least they mulligan down to six. And they scryed to the bottom, so that's good for us. They didn't find exactly what they were looking for. They're playing a Storm Tamer, like the bird, it's a good bird. We're gonna get our archaeologist out. At least if they s tap out or swing, we can swing back for a little bit more. And if we draw to through any land in the next two turns, we'll be able to sift and ideally fix our draw. Ooh, that's bad for us. Curious obsessions and enchantment. In this case, I think we actually I'm trying to remember. I don't think I actually had access to it prior, but ooh, this is gonna be cheeky. At this point, they are tapped out, as we can see. And I do have this entrancing melody. So what I can do is pay the one. This is the cost on Siren uh, Storm Tamer is one. So the X value is one. I'm just going to steal their bird with the enchantment attached to it. And swing in for two, of course. Now it looks like they might be doing the blue white flyers deck that we were playing before, which is some mild tweaking. So see where this leads us, huh? Okay, yeah, this is looking very familiar. Sadly, that enchantment was still technically his, but we got it off the board and a creature for our troubles. 
swing with both. They're gonna sit, hopefully find a mountain in the bunch. And what do we not care too much for as it stands? Because everything here is pretty valuable. Uh, hmm. Man, this is, this is actually a rough choice. I'm just gonna take, uh, let's see. The fight with fire. I don't know how reliably we're gonna get to the kicker. And I don't think they play too, too many cards with very high toughness. So what we will do to begin with is we're gonna get this. Have we played two sorceries? We're gonna play for the long con here. We're gonna get our gutter snipe out now. As well as our Vidalian Arcanist. Keep swinging. And now we'll have access to at least some form of removal next turn. Whether it's Shivan Fire, Lightning Strike, Gitu Lava Runner, I believe we have the cost to pay the kick around this. We sure do, which is good for us. In this case, what we can do, because it will cost us five to pay the kicker, and that will do four damage exactly. So we'll pay the kicker on this guy. So we get rid of his flying boy. Let's us swing into an open board, and that triggered our gutter snipe, which also pinged him for two. In this case, we're getting four more damage off, so we basically swung for six this turn. And as far as burn in hand, we have three damage, so we only have to get three to his face. Which might just mean we swing with our whole board. Okay, okay. Now, I feel a little bit dirty doing this. This, this creature's pretty cool. In this case, flying first strike, it's buffed out because of his favorable wins. And it nerfs all of our creatures with minus one, minus zero. So if we were playing a lot like a token deck or anything that had, as you can see, one damage or like a one tech, they're basically gimped. But I'm a lucky guy who happened to top deck a Shivan Fire. So we just get rid of that birdie. And then, you know, we, we BM with the lightning strike a little bit. Ooh, he's not going to let us swing in. Well, fair enough. Okay, so we have a couple games with the base deck, and then I am going to be more than happy to show you some of the tweaks I did with the Wrath of Mages 1.5. Okay, so I decided to kind of change it a little bit into a wizard tribal type theme. So in this case, what I've done, we got some card draw with ops. In this case, scry one, draw a card. It's going to be triggering our gutter snipes. It's going to be buffing up our Enigma Drakes. It's just more cycling. Let's just find what we want. So we got four of those. Four of the Siren Storm Tamer. Largely because it has that wizard creature typing, which will play a role with at least one of our cards here. We got the Gitu Lava Runners. We got some shocks. We got Blink of an Eye. Tried, of course, for more card draw. Same thing. We can also technically, when we're doing a discard, if there is a instant or sorcery that's irrelevant to us, we can dumpster it to buff up our Enigma Drake. Lightning Strike, just to more of those for our removal suite. The Viachino Pyromancers, again, Wizard. It can ping their face. The Gutter Snipes, of course. Skewer the Critics is a new one. It's one of the cards we opened in, I think, our first booster, actually. It's more burn. If we're going aggressive and we're hitting them in the face, being able to do a burn in their face for three... Get rid of a problematic creature that we like traded like one of our little weenies for all the better and one of the new cards i crafted two of because i don't want to go through crazy with all my wild cards here is i got a uh, couple copies of adelie's in this case she's a 2-2 flyer with haste for three and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell all wizards you control get plus one plus one for the turn she's a wizard Pyro is a wizard, Lava Runner is a wizard, Storm Tamer is a wizard. So in a way, we're kind of doing wizard's aggro with some burn. Now, some probably the only real questionable card in this thing. We still have some of the old holdovers. We still got Gutter Snipe, usual land suite here. I did feel like we had at least a singular. I did change it, so we probably will just go for a balance here on the fly. Our mana base should be fine. There's only a couple spells we are using that have a double cost, or is it just one after changing? Yeah, it's just one. It's just Finale of Revelation, which is the big weird one. I don't think this is good. I think the red Finale would be better. I don't have it, so I think it's Finale of Devastation. It lets us recur some of our sorceries. But if we are in top deck mode and we draw this light, or we get this light in the game, we can refill our hand and hopefully just go from there. Now, 
I'll do a quick sideboard thing, because there's some cards I feel like might have a home in this deck, but I'm not quite sure yet. If we go away from the Wizards theme and just went for, like, an Is It, is it Phoenix type thing, that's quite popular and standard right now, Crackling Drake, it's basically Enigma Drake's big brother. In this case, it has some uh, card draw power. You play it, you draw a card, fantastic. And it also adds the In Exile uh, clause to the attack bonus. So it's just a better version of its little brother. If I had unlimited uncommon wild cards, we would definitely be swapping some things around for Wizards Lightning with how many Wizards we're running. Basically getting a Lightning Bolt for one, as often as that's going to be occurring, is fantastic. I just can't really warrant the wild card uses right now, especially on the free-to-play decks. Risk Factor is kind of burn and... Uh, a draw engine in one. In this case, it's three damage. It's uh, three cost for four damage, or they can decline the damage essentially and allows us to draw three cards. And it has jump start, so that lets you play it again from exile. You discard a card to cast it, but you gotta play this card an extra time. Augur of Bolus is one I'm not sure about, but I kind of like. It plays again with our wizards. It has a decent body at two, so it can help us with some other aggro matchups. And with as many sorceries as we're running, chances are it'll hit a card and basically work as card draw. Terramander's another one. I'm a little bit iffy on this since we're running wizards, but it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. In this case, you can adapt for 4, which means you'd have to pay the cost to the left to give it uh, uh, 4 1-1 one, one counters. In this case, with as many instants and sorceries we're playing... Quite frequently, even like mid-game turn, let's just say five, we can get a 5-5 five, five flyer out. Or if we draw him late, later in the game, he's basically a 5-5 five, five flyer for two. He's definitely not bad, but that's just going to be the sideboard as it stands. Or what I would like to change some things around in the deck to play. And we're going to see how well games go now that we're playing a slightly tweaked version of Wrath of Mages. And hopefully it goes well. Here's the thing. I, I I feel bad I'm on a time crunch. It's basically me whipping these together with what I have access to. I think I did craft a couple. I crafted the ops, which at a common I'm not too concerned about. We're dealing with one Cory boy. So let's see what we have ac er, access to. We have islands, lightning strikes, pyromancer. The only thing we can cast is chart, of course. Everything else we're missing our mountains for. Now, I don't like starting with finale in hand. But let's see. Okay, at least we can get an opt on our turn. Gives us a turn one play. That's not just burn. I know we should probably technically wait for their upkeep. But um, probably wouldn't be doing any other turn one shenanigans. Ooh, Thought Erasure. It's a, it's a hand hate card. Let's us, uh, we reveal our hand, they choose a non land card and discard it. So they're going to get rid of our card draw, which is a shame because I kind of wanted that. And they're running that Augur of Bolus as well, so that's pretty cool. Ooh, he's playing Thief of Sanity. This card's pretty spooky. It's a 2 2 for 3. But whenever it attacks, they're able to look at the top three cards of our library. Basically steal one that they get to play at any point in time. And discard the other two. So we're going to get that off the board. Because that's kind of a big spooky threat. And depending on what they do, we might end up doing an early finale. Largely because I don't want to be in a point where I am just in top deck mode sitting on burn. We'll see what we draw into though. And we do have the option to lightning strike these boluses, these augers of boli, but um, on their own, they're not that big of a threat. Let's see, I think at this point I have enough mana that it's probably worth just holding up till their turn just to see if I need to double lightning strike. But Oh, and the card they did draw from this is Enter the God Eternals. It's kind of going to be a problematic card for us. It does a lot of things at once. It deals 4 damage to a target creature. 
They gain the four life based on the damage they've dealt with, and it masses four, so they get a four four zombie token out of it. Let's see what we're gonna do. We're gonna opt here. I don't think I like. I want something that comes in untapped. Let's see here. Much as I don't like it, I know if I can. The longer I can wait on this finale, the more use I'm gonna get out of it. Oh, I forgot to talk about the X is ten claw. You basically draw X, and if X is ten or greater. You draw up, untap up to five lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Sadly, I'm feeling like we might have to play something soon. And I'm a little bit concerned it's just going to get kicked, which will be a real shame, but... Yeah, they're holding up a lot of mana. We're just going to... Uh, do we play around Spell Pierce? I'm trying to figure out if they even run that... And if we do, is it even worth it? Uh, well, let's see. We have six mana, which means we can say X is four. See if this gets kicked. It probably does. Ah, oh, it resolves. Oh, thank God. We're able to get some card draw out of it. There, we're dealing with a full hand. We're going to be getting hit for two, which is a bit of a bummer. But our gutters, or Enigma Drake's looking pretty good. So what I think I will try to do, I'm trying to figure out what the better play is. Is it better for my Enigma Drake just to eat that? Because I don't have anything to protect it. Gutter Snipe. Basically, with Gutter Snipe out, we can look at the board as it stands. We can go, okay, play this. Lightning Strike is essentially a 5 damage burn. So if we did this, we'd be at like 5, 10... 15 plus whatever we draw assuming it doesn't die the turn after so yeah i think i'm just gonna slam enigma drake let's see if he counters this or not nope okay i don't want to give him the option to kill my gutter snipe at least not until the next turn because this is definitely going to be eating enter the god eternals Which is a bummer, because our health is going to be dropping pretty quickly. So what do we have for a turn here? We have this boy here. Two, three, four, five. And we only have the mana as it stands to do two lightning strikes. Ah, oh, that's really shitty for us too. So um, I feel like just out of spite we do this gonna burn him as much as we can in this case he's playing uh the eldest reborn it's a saga which works as like basically it does something different every turn for three turns first turn sacrifice creature planeswalker they control second turn on his next turn i'm going to have to discard a card let's see what can i do to save my dumbass here and third turn he's able to recur a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard so if he has something he would like so he could recur a bolus, he could recur a Thief of Sanity, go in here, get his own Gutter Sniper, Enigma Drake. I think I might be at the point where I'm just stuck flooding the board and seeing how it goes. So I think this game might be a bust. And just to not lose out to the discard, we're just going to Lightning Strike his face. I'm trying to figure out what saves us in this position. What in this deck can turn this around? Because I think we are past the point of winning. As, as far as burn is concerned, I think we still have uh, shocks and a lightning strike. So let's just see. We can get him down to six. He tat and swings with everything. No, because he'll have that. Ooh, this is concerning. Will he suit the board? Mm. What we do have to do is counter that to stop him from healing. Yeah. I'm actually almost surprised he's running Ritual of Soot in his board, because he's playing a lot of low-to-the-ground creatures. In this case, it doesn't look like we're going to be winning this one, which is a shame. Oh, good. 
Okay, win them all. And for all I know, I made just straight garbage. This could very well be a downgrade in every sense of the word. But I like to hope it's a little bit better. Well, let's see how we drew this game. Okay, we have some action. So what I think we will do here... In this case, I think we're just going to start with... We could play the G2 right away. But I'm thinking we island into opt... Yeah, I think that's gonna... Ooh, or do we just want a Storm Tamer, Lava Runner, Adelaide's Double Cantrip? I think we're just gonna play for a big-ass swing if we can. We'll see how this goes. So we're dealing with someone playing Gruel. Red-green. Ah, shit, he's gonna get my Storm Tamer. Uh, Crawl Harpooner, the way it works. When it enters, it's able to basically force a fight with a creature with flying. It's a real bummer, I'm not gonna lie. It's okay, we still have some action. Yeah, that's the bad thing about Harpooner, though. Because he has reach, he's gonna be able to hit and potentially trade with our Adelies. Domri's Ambush, okay, put a counter on his Lana War Elves. You know, our initial aggro plan is not looking too great anymore, is it? Now, let's see. We don't have double mountain, so we can't do via Shinu and Gitu. What we can do is just get Adelie's out now. The defense is open, so we're able to swing with her. Next turn, we could... Oh, please don't have more... Oh, my God. Let me see here. We're definitely losing this clock right now. So we will get Vyashino out. Ping him for two. Scry on their turn. Okay, he's not swinging. He doesn't want to trade his boys. I'm okay with that. Mm, I need more mountains. Cool. I can play the cards I want now. So far, our board is situated in a way where we should be able to basically kill everything they have if they attack. So we're kind of stalemating, with the downside being that we all out of cards. Now, what do you have, buddy? Oh boy, that's a big problem. Oh no. Oh, I do not want that lake right now. I do like that Drake though. I'm thinking we're still SOL here. But let's see what we can make happen. We can still get this big burb. Get a pyro, which is still going to be swinging. Punching them for two. Let's see, they do have a blocker up. We have eight damage on the board. Technically, if it all connects. I think our Enigma Drake's not long for this world. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's a problem, all right. Okay, I think we are just going to scoop the, this one real quick. Well, let's see what we top deck into. Will it change the game for... No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. We're, 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 we're down this one. Okay, we are up against Major Tom. All right. Uh, now let's see... I don't hate it. It's a little bit slow. We have some plays, but... Hey, what are the chances that we flood out and everything goes bad? Ooh, an Artificer's Assistant. Alrighty. So I am pretty content in just slamming this Gitu here. Artificer's Assistant is a 1-1 flyer that whenever you cast a Historic spell, you get a Scry. In this case, a Historic 
I think that's any legendary creature, uh, planeswalker, saga. I think that's all the clauses. Now, what weird janky shit are you doing, my friend? Damping spear? Okay. That hopefully won't affect us too negatively. We'll see how often we're going to be chaining spells. Now we're going to whip out our Storm Tamer. Adelie's on curve, and then we're just going to swing pretty hard with a Lightning Strike following everything up. Hmm. He's right to the top, which I don't like. He's opting, trying to find something. Yeah, card he scried to the top, of course. Now let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I think we just Adelaide and swing. At least with our Lava Runner and Adelaide herself. Is I feel like he's in a position where he very well might have traded the Artificer's Assistant for our Storm Tamer. And if I can avoid that, I would like to. It is looking like we're only going to be able to play one spell a turn as far as instants or sorceries at this rate. Well, we can be greedy. The Gutter Snipe is real slow. So let's see what we can get by with here. Ooh. Three damage. It's going to... Not buff anything. We do this. This will cost two. Yeah, there's nothing we can really do too crazy here. So I think we're just going to burn the bird. It's a little bit expensive of a burn, but all of our tr creatures are going to be getting through. Now we have access to opt, but um, I'd rather just flat out cast two spells if I can next turn. Or instants and sorceries. Transmorgifying Wand, remove a counter, destroy target creature. Okay, okay. He's pro Potentially he's going to destroy Adelaide's here. What I'm going to do is quickly opt, just so we can get the Adelaide's trigger. Oh. Does he? Yeah, he should be able to do this. Uh, okay. I mean, whatever, man. I'm more than fine stacking up my wizards this turn and burning you. And we win. Now, that one felt a little bit dirty because I wasn't sure what the hell our opponent was doing. But um, I'm okay with it. A win's a win, right? As you can see how quickly the wizards can combo off each other, though. It's like swinging for that much, just with some very, generally speak, speaking, low toughness, low power creatures. is pretty solid. But yeah, like I said, the deck's definitely in an unoptimized state. I really like those Wizards Lightning to give us access to more reliable burn. So even if our creatures can't swing through at a certain point, we're still going to be able to hit face. As well as those, um, the Draw Resurgence card, I'm forgetting the name, but showed it earlier. It's, it's there, I swear. But yeah, for now... Get to cut this one a little bit short, but I'm Dr. Ed. I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.